here next week. So uh, come on out, love on them, support them, and I know that he'll have a mighty word from the Lord for us as a body. Amen? Turn to Colossians chapter 1. We're going to jump right in today. All right, that's what I think too. Colossians 1. Tim, I'm sorry. I didn't get them to you early. I apologize. I, I, I give Tim a, a hard time up there when I don't give him my verses. <laughs> Everybody doing all right today? I tell you what, let's just open up in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this day. Uh, we know that this is a day that you've created. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad today. We're going to receive your word into our heart today as a seed planted in us. You said that your word is a seed and, and, and that gets planted in us. And, and today is no different. We're going to receive that word into our hearts. And then we're going to nurture that word. We're going to water it and, and tend to it. And, and we're going to watch it grow and come to uh, uh, fruition in our life. What your word says, because your word is true. This is the truth about you, Jesus, you and your sacrifice and and you are our focal point. You are what we're to, to focus on and concentrate on and, and have our attention, give our attention to. So let this day be no different. Let us give attention to you, Jesus, and your sacrifice as we honor your word, which is you in printed form. Hallelujah. And then we celebrate God because he sent his son for us, for me and you. So Lord, as we read this word today, open up our ears, open up our hearts to receive uh, for understanding. Uh, let us receive knowledge and understanding and grace and mercy and joy and peace. Oh my. Add all those things to us. Multiply them to us today and help us as we go throughout our weeks coming forward to be your ambassador in this world, to be an example of who Christ is, to be the reflection of Christ in the earth. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, glory. Colossians, I gave you enough time to turn there, I hope. Colossians chapter 1. Let me read verses 9 and 10. And I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation. Colossians 1, 9 and 10 says, So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. He's talking to the church at Colossae here. Uh, Paul is. He says, We ask God to give you complete knowledge of His will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. He's asking them. And he's saying, I want you to receive this. Receive complete knowledge of His will and spiritual wisdom and understanding. Verse 10 goes on to say, Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. How many want to honor and please the Lord? Don't we all want that? We want to honor and please Him. Well, he's saying if you to do that, we need to seek, right? We need to uh, uh, ask God and, and, and He'll give you that complete knowledge of His will and He'll give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. And He says, and, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. You will grow, right? So to me, that's saying I haven't arrived. Uh, you know, I can live, you know, 120 years on this earth and and, and search the, the scripture every day. And I could probably dare say I probably wouldn't arrive even in that 120 years. Until that day when we will see him face to face and we will know all that he knows. Amen. So this this journey that we're on, this this life that we that we go through, that we talk about. Uh, living here in this earth. It is a, is a journey of, of, of seeking Him daily on a regular basis. And, and like we learned last week, you know, he will, he will multiply His grace and peace to you as you seek out His knowledge. And He says right here, if you ask Him, He'll give you complete knowledge. Complete knowledge. Amen? How many know what today is? 
Amen to that. Yes, sir. From the back, Dusty. Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. That's what today is. It's a Greek word called Pentecoste. Do you know what it means? 50th. It means 50. 50th. It's a Greek word, 50, for 50th. Did you know that Pentecost Sunday is exactly 50 days after Resurrection Sunday? Y'all know we celebrated Resurrection Sunday back there in April? Pentecost Sunday is exactly 50 days after Resurrection Sunday, culminating exactly... these. I'm getting into some numerology here, but exactly seven weeks of seven days, or 49 days, that's what it culminates. Pentecost Sunday, 50 days. It's also denoted as a celebration to end uh, the end of the harvest season. Pentecost Sunday. You know, 50 is an interesting number in the Bible. How many know or have heard of the year of Jubilee? You've heard of that? It's the 50th year, 50th year of Jubilee. It's a culmination of 49 or seven sevens. And let's look at that in Leviticus. How many has read that in Leviticus before? Anybody? I got one hand. I'm glad I'm going to read it for you then. I'm glad I'm going to go back to Leviticus chapter 25. So I want to just lay some groundwork here about what today is. And, and I believe there's a, we're going to receive a, a, some revelation from the Word about why do we celebrate Pentecost Sunday? What is it all about? And what is its spiritual implications for us? Because it does have some spiritual implications. Amen? Levig- Le- Why can I not say that? Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 25. Let me just start in, in verse 1. And I, This is, again, I'm going to read down probably to 13 just to lay some groundwork about the year of Jubilee. It says, While Moses was on Mount Sinai, and I'll read quickly, but the Lord said to him, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you have entered the land I am given you, the land itself must observe a Sabbath rest before the Lord every seventh year. Now this can apply, I believe, to farmers in, in, in this day, but I don't know how many of them probably go by this. They probably uh, uh, wouldn't, but, but listen to what it says. It says, For six years you may plant your fields and prune your vineyards and harvest your crops, but during the seventh year... The land must have a Sabbath year of complete rest. It is the Lord's Sabbath. Do not plant your fields or prune your vineyards during that year. And don't store away the crops that grow on their own or gather the grapes from your unpruned vines. The land must have a year of complete rest. But you may eat whatever the land produces on its own during its Sabbath. This applies to you, your male and female servants, your hired workers and temporary residents who live with you. Your livestock, your wild animals, and your land will also be allowed to eat what the land produces. Now here's where we're getting to. Verse 8. In addition, you must count off seven Sabbath years, seven sets of seven years, adding up to 49 years in all. Then, on the Day of Atonement, in the 50th year, somebody say 50th, all right, you're awake, blow the ram's horn loud and long throughout the land. Set this year apart as holy, a time to proclaim freedom throughout the land for all who live there. It will be a jubilee year for you when each of you may return to the land that belonged to your ancestors and return to your own clan. This 50th year will be a jubilee for you. During that year, you must not plant your fields or store away any of the crops that grow on their own. And don't gather the grapes from your unpruned vines. It will be a jubilee year for you, and you must keep it holy. But you may eat whatever the land produces on its own. In the year of jubilee, verse 13, each of you may return to the land that belonged to your ancestors. That is the year of Jubilee. And if you read on down, you, you learn a little bit more. You know, uh, if there were Israelites uh, and they sold land, it had to be, they, they got it back. Or if uh, they got in a bad situation and, and couldn't uh, live on their own, they could be indentured to someone. And then at that 50th year, they, they could be released from that uh, and they would get their lands back. All of that. 
Uh, it was a year of release. A year of release. A freedom, if you will. Freedom. A freedom from debt. A freedom from enslavement. And restoration of property. So what does this have to do with Pentecost Sunday? Well, there's a correlation. I mean, you can't get away with 50 and 50 and not see some type of correlation on the 50th day after the resurrection of Jesus. He had sent what he promised. Remember, he said, wait, wait. How many of us like to wait? Huh? Nobody raise their hand. Nobody likes to wait. How many like to wait on the Lord? Uh, well, a couple, couple hands there. Oh, a few more, a few more. All right, all right. What's the word say? Be still and know that I am God. But they had to wait in Jerusalem for what he had promised, the Holy Spirit. And that's what came. And what came with the Holy Spirit? Freedom. Just like on the year of Jubilee, that 50th year, when they would receive everything re re returned back to Everything would be restored. That's why the banner is still out there in the, in, the, in the vestibule or whatever, the entrance way there. Restore, restore, restore. Remember when Brownie Bounds came and, and said, this is a battle cry, restore, restore, restore. Do y'all remember that? Or is that, that was years ago, years ago. Our battle cry was to be restored. Well, guess what? He has restored it. He's restored all things. We know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Right? Freedom and restoration. And a harvest of souls. We've talked about freedom from fear of death. Because Jesus had conquered the grave, sin and death. Restoration to the Father. Because Jesus tore the veil of separation from God and restored what was lost in the garden. We've talked about all that. We now have revelation of that uncovering, that, that unveiling, if you will. The veil that covered the glory on Moses' face. Do you all recall that uh, account where he went up on the mountain and, and uh, the glory shone in his face and it was so bright that the, he had to put a veil on so the people couldn't see it? The veil that in the Holy of Holies has separated uh, everyone from the Ark of the Covenant. Only the high priest could go in once a year to the Holy of Holies separated by that veil. Well, that veil has been done away with through Jesus. Through Jesus. He has unveiled the Christ to us. And because you are in Christ, the glory has been unveiled to you. So what does Pentecost Sunday have to do with all this? We celebrate Pentecost Sunday. We celebrate that day where the Holy Spirit came down, was delivered as promised, and it set some 3,000 people free that day. It, it, it's a type and a shadow of that year of Jubilee. You know, when, when everything was restored to the Israelites, the Holy Spirit came and restored everything that was lost in the garden. He restored that relationship with Father God where you could come boldly to His throne room of grace and talk to Him just as I'm talking to you now. Just that simple, that easy. He restored the love, peace, joy, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness gentleness, self-control, all those things when the Holy Spirit came. Look at 2 Corinthians. Y'all are awfully quiet in here today. Y'all must be wishing you were grilling out on your back deck. Huh? 2 Corinthians. Chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter three, look at verse 13. This is where it's talking about the veil. 
It says, We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel would not see the glory, even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds were hardened, and to this day, whenever the Old Covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so they cannot understand the truth. And this veil can be removed only by believing in Christ. How can it be removed? Only by believing in Christ. There's one way, one way. Jesus is the way. Verse 15 says, yes, even today when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. That's what we talked about last week, right? Growing more and more in peace, more and more in grace. All of us who have had that veil removed, how was it removed? Whenever someone turns to the Lord, if you have turned to the Lord, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then that veil has been removed for you. And since the veil is removed, we can not only see the glory of the Lord, but we are a reflection of that glory in this earth. We need to get a revelation and understanding that we are that reflection of Christ in this earth. He went on up. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He left us here. We are to reflect His glory in this earth. You are not the glory. You are not the glory. You're to reflect His glory. The moon and sun. The moon and sun. We're going to look at some analogies about the moon and sun. Everybody know what an analogy is? I'll give you a definition just in case. A comparison between two things, typically for the purpose of explanation or clarification. You know, there are some fascinating analogies in the Word about these two celestial bodies. And celestial just means belonging or relating to heaven. Remember, you are a spirit, right? You live in a body, you have a soul. You are a spirit, a celestial body. And you have a physical body that you live in. Well, in Genesis 37, how many remember Joseph's dream? And what did it say about his father, mother, and siblings? They would all bow down to him one day. Do you remember that story? Who did he call? Who was the son? The father. Who was the moon? The mother. The married couple. Right? And all the stars were the children. I mean, the, his siblings. Well, whose bride are we? Jesus's. Now, y'all, I can, I can barely hear you, but I can hear you. Jesus's. We are Jesus's bride. And in Malachi, Jesus is referred to as the son. The S U N. And He rises with healing in His wings. In Revelation chapter 22, Jesus is called the bright morning star. In 2 Peter 1, He talks about the morning star arising in your heart. Are all references to Jesus. Jesus being the Son. So in our analogy of Jesus is the Son and we, the church, the bride of Christ, just as Jacob's wife is in Joseph's dream, are the moon. What do I mean by that? What do you mean I'm the moon? This ain't no new age stuff. I'm just making an analogy of what the Word says. Just as the natural moon is a reflection of the S-U-N, we are a reflection of the S-O-N in the earth. We are a reflection of Jesus. You are not Jesus. You are a reflection of Jesus. You are not His glory. You are a reflection of His glory in this earth. You know what else the moon affects in the earth? 
the tides. Anybody been down to the beach lately? Watch the high tide and low tide. You know that it is so uh, uh, calculated that they can uh, put the, the, the tide charts out for years and years ahead of time. That's how ordered it is. We serve a God of order. You realize that? He created this world and He created, He put the moon in place exactly where it is, put the earth in place, tilted, spinning at a certain speed, put the sun there at the center of our solar system, and we, so He set the elliptical orbit around the sun all in perfection, precise so that life could thrive, so that we could thrive here on this earth. And so this is just one example of the precision of the order that He created. If we can predict for years ahead of time when a high t- when water... I mean, if you just think about this, you're, st- you're standing on the sand, this, this moving, shifting thing, and, and this water is, is, is receding and, and, and flowing and coming, and, and years... Down the road, you could walk on that same sand and know when that high tide is going to be, when that low tide is going to be. That is the God of order that we serve. And so the moon affects the tides. Well, in uh, 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 Revelation, he refers to the sea as people. So we, the church, the bride of Christ, the moon, if you will, should be affecting and influencing people in this earth while we are here. While we are here. How many are still here? Oh, I got a, look, I got a lot of hands on that one. I got a lot of hands on that one. You are here. And we're to be affecting and influencing people while we are in this earth. There's freedom to change into His glorious image more and more. And as we reflect His glory, as we reflect Him in this earth. It will change people. It will change people. I know that I've changed. I've changed because of people (laughs) and the Holy Spirit moving through people and the Holy Spirit moving on my heart. That glory in my heart. So we should be affecting and changing people. And just like we talked about last week, we can... We can have more and more grace and peace. What did first Col- what did Colossians say? Not first Colossians. What did it say? Let me read that again. Unless somebody's still there, I want to read it for me. Uh huh. Nobody wants to read it. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of His will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We want to increase our knowledge of the Lord regularly, daily, hourly, minute by minute so that we are changed, transformed into His glorious image more and more. We are changed into His glorious image more and more. We reflect that glory more and more. And as we reflect that glory more and more, the more transformation and change we'll see in ourselves. And then as people around us see that transformation and change, it'll make them want to change. It'll make them want to change. Amen? It must be hot in here. I see tired eyes all over the screen. Father, help us to understand you better. Help us to come together as a body to further your kingdom in this earth. Help us to know that we can increase in knowledge and understanding of who you are. That we can reflect that glory in this earth, your glory. 
that we can be transformed and changed and others all around us can be transformed and changed as they see the change in us. Father, help us to come together and celebrate you, Jesus. Celebrate the life that you gave to give us freedom, to give us hope, that hope of eternity in heaven, a place that is real. It's where you are. It's where you're sitting with the Father and watching over your creation. Thank you that you sent us a helper in the person of the Holy Spirit to help us in this earth. Thank you as we come together as born-again believers and like-minded in faith that we know who you are. And that as we increase in our knowledge of you and on our understanding, you give us spiritual wisdom and insight. You show us the truth. And that we're not led by every wind of doctrine and false doctrines and false prophets. But we understand your truth because we're in your truth. We're growing in it daily. And we know your voice, Jesus. We know the true voice of the shepherd. We hear that voice. We're obedient to that voice. And as we grow in these things, it's like the, the moon that waxes and wanes. As we grow in these things, we're coming into that full moon where we're bright reflection of your glory. And there'll be days when we may not reflect that glory as well, but a day is coming when it will burn bright on inside of us, just like we sang about to take us back. Take us back to that moment when we first believed. The peace that was there. The joy that just, oh, the joy that was there. Hmm. Take us back. Holy Spirit, help us remember, quicken us to see that day. Knowing that you'll do it again and again and again. You'll revive us as many times as necessary. Help us to understand that you've restored what was lost completely, wholly. Nothing missing, nothing broken. We can have victory in every area of our life. Victory in our body. Victory in relationships. Victory in our jobs. Victory in our marriages. Victory with our children. Victory in the garden. Victory at the house. Victory in the field. We can have it because of you, Jesus. We thank you for that. Holy Spirit, help us to seek out these mysteries contained in your word. Let us not lean on the, the things that, that matter not, but lean on you, our comforter, our advocate our standby. Lean on you, Jesus, our substitute. The great exchange. The pure and perfect Lamb of God that was slain. Help us to find courage every day to live a life worthy of you knowing that we are worthy because of you and your shed blood. Help us to be that reflection of who you are and what you mean to this world. Those that don't know you, that are destined for a hell that is real as all, as, as also, just as real as heaven is. Let us not forget that or gloss over it. 
or make light of it. It is a real place. Torture, and pain, and hurt. But let us remember the promise, the hope of Jesus in eternity and peace. An eternity with you, creator of all. Let us not take that lightly either. As we wade through the troubles of this earth, the troubles of this life, let us not lose sight of the hope of glory that lives in us. Let us not lose sight of our final destination, of who we really are, what we truly are. this weekend as we celebrate Memorial Day. and I mean, I don't know where you are at and what you think about this country, but I've been a, a lot of different places in the world. And been to Europe and South America, Canada, the Caribbean, the nice part and the not so nice part. Been to emerging countries, what some people call third world countries, seen a lot of things. And I can honestly say from my experiences, this is the land of opportunity. <laughs> I, I have personally experienced people that start out with absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And become tremendously successful. Not, not just in, in business and worldly things, but spiritual things. Because we do have freedom to, to worship God here. We have the freedom to make something more of ourselves. But a lot of places do not afford the people there that. We have the freedom to do that. So you can whine and complain about this and that, or you can change it. <laughs> Just as you changed your eternal destination when you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. as you are transformed more and more into His glory, that reflection of Him. You can change, affect, and influence people around you, just like that man. And in this country, you have the freedom to do just that. So Memorial Day was set aside to thank the veterans fallen in battle for this country. Like I said, we all have different opinions of this country and what it means to you. But having seen the outside world, and by far not all of it, but what I have seen makes me appreciate where I live even more. And so as you go throughout this week and even today, just remember those lives that were given to secure that freedom, freedom to worship God. Freedom to express your own opinion. Freedom to be successful. You know, the Bible says that He will prosper your hand in whatever you put it to. In some places, that's easier done than others. And I, think, I believe that this place, this country is a place where it is seems to be easier than, than other places. So... We honor our veterans today, this weekend. As we get together with family and celebrate and cook and eat and sleep late on Monday morning. Just remember why we celebrate that day. It's not just a day off from work. Although it is for a lot of people. For most. I don't know. Is insurance off on Monday? Praise God. <laughs> Well, all right, that's my encouragement for today.
Now, don't go out there and say, my pastor was telling us we're the moon and talking about tides. and uh, Then you'll be stretching it into something. He's making us wear crystals to affect the time. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Just an analogy to help us think. Think biblically about things. You do affect people in this earth. That glory reflected off of you, just like the moon reflects the light of the sun to give us light at night. That's what's happening. You are reflecting the glory of the sun, S-O-N, in this earth, giving light to the world here. Affecting the sea of people in this world just as the moon affects the tides, you can affect the sea of people in this world because you have the Holy One living on the inside of you. That spirit of truth that's leading and guiding you in all that you do. Amen? Y'all encouraged? Anybody learn anything new? Well, I got a couple of hands. Praise God. Will Lord seal these words to us today? And uh, as they were read, as, as, as your word was read today, let it inspire us to go deeper. This is just like we've chunked a little bit off the top of the iceberg and, and we've seen it come off, well, let us dive down under the surface and and see the immensity of Your Word. And and Lord, You can reveal it to us. You can reveal Your Word to us. You can take the cover off. Apocalypsis. Give us revelation. Take the veil off. Just as Moses was hiding His glory the veil in the Holy of Holies was separating us from the ark. Remove the veil off of your word and let us see it. Let us experience it. Let us understand it. Let us grow in that knowledge of it. Give us spiritual wisdom from it as we grow more and more in your grace, as we grow more and more in peace as we grow more and more in understanding our reflection becomes brighter in this world so we thank you for that and we love you and we say amen amen well before y'all go and it's early so uh, before you go and and do what you're going to do for this holiday weekend I want to give you opportunity to sow your tithes and offerings today and sow into missions, don't forget. So ushers, you'll prepare. I believe that you've prepared in your heart ahead of time that you understand uh, you were sowing seed. That's a financial seed, but uh, I pray that you sow other seeds, seeds of your time, seeds of your talent uh, as we go along in this earth. And, you know, people can see that reflection of glory in you when you give of yourself. You know, I know, um, and I know we've been talking a lot about the Agape Center, but there's a lot going on over there. And I, I know people have sown seeds of themselves over there, literally in the, in a garden and uh, with their time and, and resources. And so I thank y'all as a member church of the Agape Center. I thank y'all for participating with them. Um, I know they've expanded some hours and they're doing more and more. Uh, they'll, they're taking... Uh, uh, seasonal clothing now and, and always uh, taking food food items and uh, canned goods and diapers as, as well. So uh, I'll just keep that before you as we go along. But that is um, a place where, where, where we can put our seed into and know that it's accomplishing much in the New River Valley here. So I thank you for that. But I pray that you prepared your heart ahead of time to give. And so ushers, come on.
All right, I've got a confession. I did end a little bit early today because we're getting on the road to go to Florida today. So. <laughs> I don't know if you think that a benefit or a detriment, but uh, <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, I, I really appreciate all, everyone that's uh, wished us well, and we're looking forward to get down there and bring our son back and celebrate with Nikki's family down there, but... Um, uh, Pastor Rob and Trisha will be here next Sunday, and uh, I know they'll have uh, wonderful things in store. So uh, I pray that you all just enjoy this weekend, enjoy this extended weekend. I hope most everybody w is able to enjoy an extended weekend uh, with work that they uh, let you off to, to have a day, a day of freedom, a day of freedom. And don't forget, you know, don't forget. Don't forget those that, that have sacrificed. You know, Jesus sacrificed. He gave it all. He gave it all. You know, not to compare uh, people in our military or whatever to, to Jesus in that way is given that much, but they, they give their lives. So, and they believe in what they do. Um, so we should honor that. I believe we should honor that. Amen? Well, I love you guys. And I'll see you next, not next Sunday, the following Sunday. Um, just love on Pastor Rob and Trisha for us. Actually, you know what? You don't have to. I'm sorry. We're going to see them when we go down there. Yeah, so we're staying uh, right right down to two doors down from them for a few days. And so we're going to get to love on them ourselves. So y'all don't have to love on them for us. Y'all just love on them for yourselves and not for us. So Pastor Rob and Trisha, we're coming. Keep the light on. Um, I love y'all. I do. Nikki and I both do. Uh, y'all, uh, this is Nikki's last Sunday with the youth in the back. So we're, we're changing up a few things. I told you we're going to reinstitute family Sunday again. So the first Sunday of the month, we'll have all the kids, everybody in here every first Sunday of the month. So, uh, she is, uh, she is going to, uh, and Kate Turner has graciously said to She'll coordinate the, the youth for us. And, of course, Crystal's still back there. And uh, the gardens will be helping out back there. But we'll just be doing it three Sundays. So Nikki will be able to, to sit in here. And I'm glad because I don't like seeing that seat empty over there. <laughs> so we'll be doing that uh, June. It will be the first Sunday uh, because we wanted all the youth and everybody in here for Pastor Rob and Tricia. And then every first Sunday after that, um, we'll have all the family uh, in here at one time. And, my, my, I'll just share a little bit. See, I said I was getting you out early. I'll just share a little bit about what I hope to do and plan to do. Uh, I shared this with the elders, but um, I, 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 the, so the, the Lord showed me this, I mean, years ago. And I, I said, I'm not going to do that. That's so old school. That's just so like, I had a friend of mine, his, his grandfather was a pastor and he used to um, have the children, he'd call the children down every service you know, for about five or 10 minutes or maybe not even that long in the front of the sanctuary, just do a little uh, children's lesson, you know, do a little teaching with them. And I, the Lord was calling me to do that for years. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's so just old school, you know. But I, it just has kept resonating in me. And so the first Sunday on Family Sunday, uh, I'm going to start doing that. I want to bring the kids up front, all of them. Uh, probably mostly the younger kids. I don't, I don't call the uh, teenagers up here. They probably won't. But anyways, and I want to I want to get in character, and I want to teach out of the Bible in character. So um, y'all be praying for me, and uh, I might need a seamstress, <laughs> not to create anything. Maybe just to add a few little frills to some stuff. But uh, so anyways, I, I, we hope to do that. I was just that's just an explanation of why Nikki's coming out of the back. Sunday, so um, I, I pray that it is uh, something unique for the kids uh, that will help them hear uh, from me and hear from the Lord and learn, obviously, from object lessons and skits and uh, who doesn't like dress up? Don't y'all answer that. So anyways, uh, thank y'all for...
being so faithful, so loving, so kind. And we will see you back in two weeks. Amen? All right, love y'all.